Would you please stand? Just kidding. <laughs> Open to Psalm 119, if you don't mind. Now, as you're gathering, we are getting ready to read the longest chapter in the Bible together, and some of you are wondering why. Why, uh, why would we just read a big chunk of scripture without any kind of preaching? Or maybe you have the question about why we read a psalm every week. Maybe you wonder why different churches do different scripture readings, uh, and I'm just going to answer, I'm going to try to do my best to answer those for you right now. I'm writing a note to myself. Forgive me. Uh, so we're gonna. I'm gonna give you just a little bit about why public reading of Scripture is what it's called. Is when one person just reads and we all just take in God's word without any kind of comment. We'll talk just a tiny bit about Psalm 119, and then we're gonna read through the whole thing together. The elders and I have split it up into five parts. So, uh, number one, why the public reading of Scripture? Because it is modeled throughout the entire Bible. Uh, in the Old Testament, for example, Moses commanded for the entire law of Moses to be read before the nation of Israel. Um, you fast forward to the book of 2 Kings, and they have lost the law of God, and it's hidden in the temple somewhere. And when they find it, and Josiah realizes, we haven't been uh, paying attention to this at all. Uh, what does he do? He brings everyone together, and they read the whole thing together, which is a lot longer than Psalm 119. Um, Ezra and Nehemiah, after Israel comes back from exile, one of their first orders of business is to read the entire law together. And of course, they had people going throughout the crowd and explaining and translating things. Nonetheless, the public reading of Scripture is modeled throughout the Old Testament, and it's commanded in the New Testament. 1 Timothy 4.13, until I come, this is Paul writing to Timothy, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture. We are told some of the last words in Scripture. Blessed is the one who observes the public reading of Scripture. This is Revelation 1.3. Blessed is the one who reads these words aloud, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written, for the time is near. So why do we observe the public reading of Scripture? Because it's modeled and commanded in Scripture. Theologically, there's another explanation, and it's basically this. God's Word does not need the comment of a preacher. God's word is powerful enough that whether or not a preacher explains it, now look, preaching is also modeled and commanded in scripture, so it's not that preaching is irrelevant or, or unnecessary, but here's what we read about God's word in Hebrews 4. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's not talking about a preacher. That's talking about God's word. We read in 2 Timothy 3, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Now, look, teaching and things like that are included in there. But when we, when we engage in the public reading of scripture, when we read it and it doesn't have a comment, we just say, thus says the Lord. We are saying God's word is powerful enough to change us and, and cut us apart and, and save us without, with or without a preacher. So that's, that's really what we're saying. Um, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2 that when he went to the Corinthians and preached to them, he said he was a horrible speaker, which is hard for us to believe, isn't it? But he says, it's, it's so that your faith not rest in me, but that it rests in the gospel and in the power of God. Um, there's a, a really funny story from church history where Charles Spurgeon was converted, and he wasn't able to go to his normal church. I'm, I'm piecing this together from, my, from the depths of my memory, so if I have it a little bit off, forgive me. But Spurgeon couldn't go to his normal church because it was a really snowy day, and he stumbled into just some old country church next to his place, and there, I think their normal pastor wasn't there. It was a guest preacher, and you know what Spurgeon said about the guy? He was stupid. 
But he was reading Isaiah 45, I believe it is, where it says, turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth. And Spurgeon was converted by a stupid preacher, not because of the preacher, shouldn't even say by a stupid preacher, but by the power of the word of God. And so if we believe that God's word is powerful, then we will read it without comment. Now, I know it's a little ironic because I'm explaining things now, but I'm explaining what we do week by week when we read the Psalms, and I'm explaining to you why we are going to read through all of Psalm 119 today. So that's the public reading of Scripture. Uh, What about Psalm 119? As you know, it's the longest chapter in the Bible. Uh, You might not know that it's what's called an acrostic poem, an acrostic poem. And what that means is that the first letter of every line it ascends alphabetically. And so there are 22 sections in Psalm 119, and that's because there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Now, normally, most of the time, acrostic poems in Scripture are just one line per letter. So line A starts with A. Line B starts with B. Line C starts with C. You get the point. There are two poems in Scripture that uh, they, they have more than one line dedicated to each letter, and Psalm 119 has eight verses dedicated to each letter. And so that's why you read and you see maybe Aleph and Beth and Gimel and Dalit. You're going, hold on, what's this? Those are the Hebrew letters. Maybe your Bible even has some Hebrew letters. So um, public reading of scripture, Psalm 119, what should you and I do today as we listen to God's word being read without comment? Number one, expect God to speak to you. Anytime you read the Bible, God is speaking to you. Maybe you've heard the silly little quib that's out there. If you ever want to hear God speak, uh, read his word. And if you want to hear him speak audibly, read it audibly. Um, God is speaking to us this morning as we read his word. So, So come to his word expectantly. Secondly, here's what I would advise you to do. Pick one verse. As, as you read, pick one verse that strikes you and you go, I'm going to memorize that one. I'm going to chew on that one. I'm going to meditate on that one. I'm going to pray about that one. I'm going to ask God how I can apply that one. And if we have time, I'm going to call on you and see which ones you came up with. Okay? So this should take about 20 minutes or so. The elders and I are going to read through it. Uh, let's pray first, shall we? Lord, your word is living and active, and your word is what opens our eyes and changes our hearts by the power of your spirit. And so, God, um, we, we pray that you will bless the reading of your word this morning. We pray that you will give us the heart of the psalmist who wrote this psalm, and we know, Lord, that you will do your work in our hearts by your word, which is living and active. Please, Lord, change us for the sake of your own glory and do it by Psalm 119. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We're not going to ask you to stand because it's a long one. Um, Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I will not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? by guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Verse 17. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. 
I am a sojourner on the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your rules at all times. You rebuke the insolent, accursed ones who wander away from your commandments. Take away from me scorn and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. Verse 25. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When I told of my, when I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me, and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at what worthless things and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise that you may be feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your rules are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. Verse 41. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have an answer for him who taunts me, for I trust in your word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your rules. I will keep your law continually forever and ever, and shall walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and shall not be put to shame, for I find my delight in your commandments, which I love. I will lift up my hands towards your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Verse 49, remember your word to your servant in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, that your promise gives me life. The insolent utterly deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. When I think of your rules from of old, I take comfort, O Lord. Hot indignation seizes me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my sojourning. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and keep your law. This blessing has fallen to me that I have kept your precepts. Verse 57, the Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I entreat your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight, I rise to praise you because of your righteous rules. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. Verse 65, you have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The insolent smear me with lies. But with my whole heart, I keep your precepts. Their heart is unfeeling like fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Verse 73, your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you should see me and rejoice 
because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your rules are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let your steadfast love comfort me according to your promise to your servant. Verse 77, let your mercy come to me that I may live for your law is my delight. Let the insolent be put to shame because they have wronged me with falsehood. As for me, I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me that they may know your testimonies. May my heart be blameless in your statues that I may not be put to shame. Psalm 81. My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. My eyes long for your promise. I ask, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten your statutes. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. By your appointment, they stand this day, for all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me. But I consider your testimonies. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditations. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Though through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Psalm 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my free will offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your rules. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Verse 113, I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your promise, that I may live, and let me not be put to shame in my hope. Hold me up, that I may be safe, and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn all who go astray from your statutes, for their cunning is in vain. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. Verse 121. I have done what is just and right. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Give your servant a pledge of good. Let not the insolent oppress me. My eyes long for your salvation and the fulfillment of your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your steadfast love and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. It is time for the Lord to act, for your law has been broken. Therefore, I love your commandments above gold, above fine gold. Therefore, I consider all your precepts to be right. I hate every false way. Verse 129. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. 
The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady my steps according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression that I may keep your precepts. Make your face to shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because the people do not keep your law. Verse 137. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. You have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried and your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. Trouble and anguish have found me out, but your commandments are my delight. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. Verse 145, with my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Lord, I will keep your statutes. I call to you, save me, that I may observe your testimonies. I rise before dawn and cry for help, I hope in your words. My eyes are awake before the watches of the night, that I may meditate on your promise. Hear my voice according to your steadfast love. O Lord, according to your justice, give me life. They draw near who persecute me with evil purpose. They are far from your law. But you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known from your testimonies that you have founded them forever. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my case and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your rules. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Verse 161. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous rules. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Verse 169. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips will pour forth praise, for you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your word, for all your commandments are right. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live and praise you, and let your rules help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your law. We pray, Lord, that you would write it on our hearts, that we might not sin against you. We pray, Lord, that you would use your word to grow us and bring us to yourself. And we pray, Lord, that you would, um, you would do good to your servants here this morning as a result of hearing your word read today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> 